Ludicrous Feed is proudly sponsored by Carloop, EV and Warbox. Hey everyone, it's Tom here from Ludicrous Feed. Thank you so much for joining us. Right now I am driving the BYD E6 5-seater MPV multi-purpose vehicle, which I have loaned from ev.com.au, which is an EV car sharing platform, and the host is UR Drive. And I have this car for the next six days. Well, actually, I've driven it for three now. I've got it for the next two days. Um, and uh, I'm doing this because, one, I want to review this vehicle. And secondly, because I have sold my 2023 black rear-wheel drive Tesla Model 3. Uh, stay tuned for uh, details on how I sold that vehicle. Uh, but um, ev.com.au is now a sponsor of the channel, and they were kind enough to give me a 20% off the deal. Uh, which means I only paid $360 for six days rental. There is a bit of a multi-day discount as well if you want to uh, try out this vehicle. So yes, like I said, uh, it's an electric vehicle, BYD uh, E6. Uh, BYD only brought out a handful of these cars to sell in Australia, so there's not many of them around. And uh, you'll probably only find them on the used car market and also on rental platforms like this as well. So. First impressions of this car, um, look, it's big. Uh, it, uh, it's got a fairly good range, actually, given the size of the battery. Um, but you would really uh, only have this vehicle if you need the space, I would say. Um, and if you want to really try the car for yourself. Uh, a couple of things which I'll talk about when I'm um, driving the car on the highway, which I will very shortly. There's no cruise control. Uh, and the DC fast charging rate is not great either. So I'll talk about that uh, a bit later on. And I'll do a full walk around of this car too uh, uh, after we do this drive. So stay tuned for that. I'll go through all the features uh, and, the, and the interior and the exterior of the car as well. So you get a better idea of what the car is about. Uh, just quickly on the EV platform, very easy to rent, uh, very user-friendly interface. So uh, very straightforward, make sure you get on that, put your details in and then rent it. You'll be approved within 24 hours, usually by the host. Um, and then you can uh, communicate with the host uh, through the platform as well. Very straightforward. Okay, so back on this vehicle, so um, 71 kilowatt hour battery, supposed 520 kilometers of WLTP range. Um, having driven on the uh, city streets for the last few days, uh, the efficiency is sitting around 15 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So with a battery pack of about 71 uh, kilowatt hours, you're probably looking more like 450, maybe 470 kilometers of range on the, on the roads, like city streets like this. And then we'll hit the highway very shortly to give you an idea of what it, the actual range is like as well when you're cruising on, uh, on the freeway at like 100, 110 kilometers an hour. Um, other things to note about this car, um, no Apple CarPlay, uh, I'm hooked up uh, to the car's infotainment system via Bluetooth, uh, I've been listening to my audiobooks and the radio as well through TuneIn that way. Um, do miss Apple CarPlay when I have a non-Tesla vehicle, uh, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, very good to have, unfortunately this car doesn't have it. It can receive phone calls as well through Bluetooth, the audio quality is not great, but does the job, so there is a workaround not having Apple CarPlay. Um, other features, uh, you know, uh, full climate control. Infotainment screen is uh, okay, very similar to the BYD Auto 3. Uh, it feels like it's one generation behind. Um, there's, um, there's a few translation issues with the uh, settings as well, but you kind of get the uh, get the idea. Uh, no uh, navigation, unfortunately, so no EV trip planning. Uh, inbuilt radio, of course. Other settings uh, you can customize as well. Regen braking settings is there as well. Zero to 100 in uh, 14 seconds. You're not going to you know, hire this car for a performance vehicle for testing. You'd really only get it if you need the space, like I said. And uh, yeah, power of 70 kilowatts, which is reflected in the acceleration, of course. Uh, this car, however, can charge at 22 kilowatts AC. I was quite impressed with that, just charging at home on my Tesla wall connector. So that's quite handy. Uh, the DC fast charging is limited to 60 kilowatts. So uh, last night I went to a public DC fast charger in my local area and 
I was charging, I got it from 30% to 70% um, and it took 40 minutes. So I would say without cruise control, without quick DC fast charging, I'm not sure I'd want to take this on too many road trips for too long because you'd be waiting quite a while. Imagine only getting 40% of uh, a top up um, in 40 minutes. So you're probably waiting more like an hour, hour and a half for a quote unquote full charge, which other YouTubers and content creators have done as well online. You can hear that sort of electronic noise at low speed. It cuts in at about 30 kilometers an hour. Um, I've seen this in operation uh, for the BYD Auto 3 as well, so I'm kind of used to it. It can get a bit loud. There's no way to turn it down because it's a safety feature. Um, so I would say it's probably, uh, probably too loud personally. It's a little bit annoying, but I understand why they do it, right? Um, other than that, it's uh, look. It handles like basically a big car, right? A big SUV type thing. Um, I'm not sure what to call it really. It's probably a mini minivan rather than a big SUV. Um, in terms of size, I ha had it side by side next to my well, our Model Y in the garage, and in terms of length, it's very similar. Not not much in it at all. In terms of height, similar as well. This one probably a little bit taller, and obviously more room up the back as well, uh, as opposed to the Model Y, which is more sort of sport back. So yeah, we'll go for a, a quick drive on the highway just to give you an idea of what the efficiency is like and then we can work out a uh, quick estimate as to what kind of range you can expect if you're going to take this for a road trip. I'm not going to do a full range test. Uh, it's just a bit too much, I think, in this car. I don't have this for too long either. And like I said, we'll go for a uh, quick walk around uh, of the vehicle after we do our test drive. So stay tuned. Uh, just a few other quick points before we go on the freeway. Uh, obviously being a big car, it's got a pretty big turning circle, so don't be expecting to do too much darting in and out on city roads. You can probably just see here on the uh, binnacle screen here on the dashboard, you can see a uh, state of charge, very small number, 65% currently. And then you've got a graphic indicator as well. This sort of manual looking speedometer here on the right, very old school. Um, and then you've got here on the power rating, obviously in the positives you're using energy. Uh, and then you've got regen breaking down here as well. When it goes to that green bit, uh, means it's charging the battery. Um, a front wheel drive vehicle, yeah, it's not quick, I've got to say. I mean, you're not going to buy this to get off the line quickly. So you just got to change your mindset a little bit, having uh, driven other cars like, you know, quicker vehicles like Tesla, uh, even Polestar, Hyundai's Kias. Uh, this is not a quick vehicle, so don't expect to get out of a side street quickly on all main road. Uh, acceleration really is not great, especially up on incline. So take it easy with that pedal. With charging, um, you can schedule charging to some degree. You can actually um, set a timer, you know, delay the charging rather than schedule, I guess, by whatever, hours, um, minutes. Uh, that only works if you plug in the charger itself. You can't do it uh, preemptively. Uh, you have to press the on off button to start the car. Uh, no, no fancy features like preconditioning, all those things you might find in the Tesla. Um, auto lights, that's always good. Uh, no rain, sen rain sensing wipers, uh, but there are rear wipers, uh, which is quite handy to have. And this car is actually still fairly fresh. You see the on the, on the odometer there, 1,998 kilometers. So we're just two kilometers shy of its uh, 2,000 kilometer birthday. And then on the screen there, I'm not sure whether you can see, you can see the uh, you know, the current status of the battery in relation to the motor. When you're using, obviously, power, it's going yellow, and then when you regen, it goes green, so it is uh, returning energy back into the car. Uh, it's not one pedal driving, there's two levels of regen braking, standard and, I guess, larger. They call it larger, you probably see it there. Again, the sort of translation issues there from Chinese, um, assuming that means more regen rather than less, although I could be wrong. I haven't actually worked out the difference. Uh, I can't perceive any real difference between uh, larger and uh, normal. Uh, there's two driving modes, sport and comfort as well. There's no um, auto hold, uh, but they've, they've got this automatic hill function, I think. It kind of works, like if you're like up an incline, for example, at a traffic light, you're not going to roll back. Um, in fact, it's got, it's got creep, like an automatic ice car. So it'll just keep rolling forward for you as a bit of a safety feature. But certainly you can't hold on with your brake pedal and then let go and expect it to automatically hold the vehicle like you can with other uh, EVs. 
Uh, it's just not a function. I've tried looking for it. It's not there. Okay, so let's turn on to the M1 motorway here in the north of Sydney. We'll just go for a quick drive. We'll turn off the first exit. In normal sort of flat urban conditions, like I said, I've been getting around 15 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So expecting a range of just under 500 kilometers, probably more like 470 maybe. We'll just see what we can achieve uh, driving at about 100, 110 kilometers an hour. It's just an estimate by the way, uh, rather than a true range test. And they've got two like efficiency um, settings. You've got average, which I assume it's kind of relative instantaneous. You know, the last whatever, I, I don't know how many kilometers, maybe 10, 20 kilometers worth of driving, maybe even less, maybe five kilometers of driving versus um, I guess cumulative to give you an idea of what efficiency the overall the car has had uh, over its lifetime. You can actually, maybe I can show you that real quick. So you see that that's total and that's showing, oh, total is showing 17.6 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers. And then this average, I know the font's very small, but the average is 16 at the moment. Uh, it's been a bit hilly up here in the north of Sydney, but like, as I said, normally when it's flat, it's going at about 15. All right, so we are now going at 100. As I said, the acceleration's not great, so you just gotta be patient with this car. And uh, let's go at 110 if we can. Oh, we've got an L driver, might just sneak back into the middle lane here. Okay, so there's some confounding factors here uh, and the fact that we are driving uh, on a decline currently, so it's not a true reflection of, I guess, um, 110, although we'll see what happens when we move at 110. Again, no cruise control, so I can't, I can't sort of keep it consistent at 110. I've just got to use my foot old school style and keep it there. Bit of a hill coming up here. So again, this will probably confound things a little bit. All right, the next exit's coming up. So I might do one more exit because it's not really a true reflection just yet. Again, like the M1 is hilly as well. So it's not really flat, not a great test again, but that's all I've got to work with for the moment. Oh, there really is no power, huh? 70 kilowatts, I've just got a floor, I'm flooring it now. <laughs> And it's struggling to reach 110. You probably see it through my glasses there. Okay, now it's about 110. Uphill, 16.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, going at 100 plus. Usually on the freeway, um, uh, EVs are not as good as they are on the urban roads because of the regen braking. Um, and again, it's not one pedal, but if you push the friction brake initially, it'll still be regen, look, I'll show you. So I'll just push my brakes and it's still going green, right? But not that true one pedal driving uh, where it comes to a complete stop, which is okay. I mean, that's, that's quite a high-end feature anyway for EVs. Okay, so now we're going downhill a little bit. and the efficiency should improve. Okay, so we might turn off here at the next exit. Um, I've got to uh, do other things today, but um, again, you know, because there's a bit of elevation, a bit of wind as well, so those things can affect range a little bit too and efficiency, but I think you can probably expect around 17 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers for this car on the freeway going at 110. Um, versus 15 on sort of flat urban roads. So like I said, it loses a little bit on the freeway because you're going fast uh, and there's no regen braking generally. So at 17, you know, with a, a battery pack of 71 um, kilowatt hours then, so how many times does 17 go into 71? So maybe just over four times. So I reckon if you can achieve 400 kilometers, maybe a smidge over uh, with this car, BYD E6 and uh, on the freeway going at 110, then I think you're doing well. All right, here's an opportunity to uh, accelerate. And again, have foot on the floor, 70, 80, 90, no, not even 90, 90 now, uh, 100 now. And that was off a rolling start, so 
I'm not doing a formal acceleration test, but yeah, I can definitely believe that it's only got 70 kilowatts of power, uh, 0 to 114 seconds. Actually, I'll mention one more thing about this car uh, before the walk around, and that is the ride comfort. Um, it's actually very similar to the BYD Auto 3 again. Um, the suspension is, um, mm, I wouldn't say firm, but uh, it's a little bit floaty, like the Auto 3 I discovered uh, on my long drives. You know, some people like that, of course, uh, suspension and ride comfort is very subjective, but I do feel like at high speed it does sort of move around a little bit. So just be aware of that as well, and particularly with turning, uh, the turning circle, uh, it's just not as stable as other, other vehicles I've driven into. Uh, but look, I think it's comfortable enough, very spacious vehicle, as you, you'll see on the walk around uh, a bit later on. Uh, again, probably good for sort of short to medium drives, and again, good for hauling big items, given the amount of space that you've got in the back. Okay, so this is the BYD E6, here is a shot of the front three quarter here is a shot of it from the front there you go let's have a look at it from the side there it is from the side i kind of want to give you a comparison of what it looks like uh, what it feels like in terms of size kind of looks like a honda odyssey right and you think it's uh, as big as that but it's actually about the same length as the Tesla Model Y, and it only seats five. So, not as versatile as a seven-seater, but the boot is pretty big, as I'll show you in a second. There's a shot of the rear three-quarter, and there it is from the back. So yeah, so I guess a minivan-sized type car, but only five seats. But it does have quite a big boot, so let me just show you. Uh, no power tailgate, of course. That's okay. And there it is, very spacious. And it looks like it could probably fit another row in there, but this particular variant doesn't have a third row. Now this rental came with a mobile charger, as you can see right there, 10 amps. And uh, it's got a, believe it or not, a spare. There we go, a spare tire. Very unusual these days for an EV, but that is one benefit of this BYD E6. And yeah, it is quite roomy, so I reckon you could probably I don't, know. I don't know whether other variants in Asia have got a uh, second or third row, I should say, with um, extra seats. And obviously being a minivan uh, without a sport back, it's not going to be super aerodynamic. Uh, you can see uh, it's got quite a high roof. Again, good for storage, if that's what you need. But of course that will uh, cause it to suffer in terms of efficiency on the highway. Let's have a look at the charging port for you. So push in, there we go covered flaps for type 2 and then the DC portion making it a combined CCS2 plug which is compatible with 95% uh, of DC fast chargers in Australia and probably 99% of AC slower chargers, level 2 chargers in Australia as well. Okay so we'll start back to front with our look around. We'll start with the second row because space is what we're here to see. Let's have a look. So. Powered windows, uh, chrome finish, storage down here for drinks. Uh, these mats look like they're aftermarket, but loads of storage down here. Almost flat floor for all intents and purposes, pretty much is. It's really spacious back here. I'll just have a seat here for you. I'm sitting here and uh, that seat is not too far back. And look at the amount of room between my knees and that seat. That's like one, two, three probably three to four fists between my knees and the back of that seat there. Uh, no storage behind the seats, unfortunately. We've got uh, USB-A ports down here, one, two, and air conditioning vent. Got old build your dreams down here as well, BYD signature. Uh, we've got lighting up the top here, uh, no panoramic sunroof, and we've got um, headrest, which you can remove. Okay, so the second row is just one long seat like that, and. Uh, I had a good look at the vehicle. I actually cannot find a lever or any button or anything to help bring these seats down. Otherwise, if you could, it'd be a, a very useful space, right? All this huge amount of space. So if you have ever driven one of these, let us know in the comments below if there's a lever somewhere which we're missing. There are three anchor points for child seats as well, if you need that. Okay, let's move into the driver's seat. 
We've got powered mirror controls here, powered windows and window lock, uh, more storage down here for drink bottles and things. And we've got manual seat controls here, two levers for your back and also to uh, elevate your seat. And then just the good old uh, manual lever to move your seat uh, forward and back. And then over here we've got lighting controls for brightness intensity and then headlight uh, level adjustment in case you've got a large payload in the back. Let's have a look inside. Here we've got a uh, instrument cluster here, uh, dashboard uh, display, and that is definitely a analog speedometer and power on the left, uh, and we've got wiper controls on the right, and indicators are on the left, auto lights here. On the steering wheel, BYD logo, the older BYD logo, and then we've got uh, menu controls here on the side here, and then down here is start stop button here. And then down here you can adjust your steering height column. Let's uh, put the AC on and power on so it's not too warm. That's just my third party mobile phone holder. And then there's Bluetooth, like I said, um, more settings you can play with as well. Um, AC is controls there, so climate control, the usual demisters and other things, fairly standard and more uh, settings here as well. Uh, a lot of this you've got to work out for yourself because the uh, translation is uh, lost in communication sometimes, but you know, there's things like steering mode, energy recycle, which is regen braking, I think, uh, and then electronic stability control, voice assist, uh, lighting controls as well, follow me home, follow me leave, which is, I guess, how long you want the light on for when you leave the car, and then sound controls, and then the system controls are all here as well. And then if you want the info when you're driving, that is the uh, power cycling meter, whether you're using power or regenerative braking. Mileage for electricity consumption, status of the vehicle, and more information, which is not there anyway. Okay, and then you've got uh, vents down here, build your dreams, signature move from BYD. Bit of storage down here. It's not wireless charging, but just nice to have that storage. And more buttons down here for things like uh, air conditioning, uh, uh, regenerative braking settings. Uh, the gear dials are down here. And more drink holders down here as well. Park brake. Glove box. Big enough. And passenger side, window control storage. And a little storage cubby down here as well. And two more USB-A plugs for charging. And also a 12 volt plug as well. And then up here we've got uh, we've got the lights and the standard two visors. Um, there's mirrors as well and a ticket holder. There we go. And these can be swiveled over here, but they don't pull out all the way. And just back on the second row, uh, still investigating as to whether the seats can fold down or not. I don't see any sort of swivel point or pivot point where the backs can uh, fall forward. So again. If you know better than me, uh, leave a comment below. And sadly, no uh, front or front bonnet storage, just the uh, parts of the car on display. All right, everyone, well, that is the BYD E6. Many thanks again to EV Rentals for loaning me this vehicle uh, with a 20% discount, much appreciated. And also thanks to UR Drive, the host uh, of this BYD E6. Thanks so much for watching. Until the next Ludicrous Feed video, happy charging.